morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome all of you to our worship service and especially warm welcome to those of you who are visiting with us this morning. And we do have a group of visitors. There is a youth group that is going to do a drama presentation during the offering time. And they're here from Faith Lutheran in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with their pastor, Jerry Watts. Would you please all stand up? Welcome to St. John. Thank you for being here. They did a great job at the 8 o'clock service. They're going to repeat their little drama for you. Um, also, it's Memorial Day weekend as we remember those who sacrificed their lives in service for this country. So um, I'm going to ask this question. If you have someone in your family who sacrificed their life while serving this country, would you please raise your hand? It can be your brother, your parent, your child. Your... All right, I see a few. Okay. Also, those of you who served in the military, please stand up. We had you all stand up at the 8 o'clock. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. We appreciate that. Also, some other announcements. VBS sign-up continues. We're going to have two uh, weeks of VBS, one at St. John, one in uh, combined with uh, First Methodist. So please consider uh, either volunteering. There's going to be a meeting next Sunday for the VBS group here at St. John. Also, a group um, uh, is forming interested in going to Honduras on a mission trip. To the orphanage uh, in the mountains of Honduras, what we've gone before. So if you uh, are interested, if you'd like to consider this, they're going to be going in November over the Thanksgiving weekend, but they're, they're beginning to meet now. So Brad Allen is the one who is going to be in charge of this mission trip. You can also give a call to the church office if you need more information. Uh, all the other announcements are on your Sheets, uh, we continue to collect uh, things for the Sisters of uh, Sanctuary and also for our um, Bernie Community Coalition Summer Lunch Program. So please also consider those. Um, we now prepare our hearts for worship with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll take now a minute of silence to confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you with all the word and deed, and all we have done, and all we have done unto you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace. this holy house 
and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. this is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. O oh, mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord.
Praise to you and peace from God, the Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So during this Easter season, we've continued with our series, How Jesus Blesses Us, and this is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the last one. So we've heard how Jesus walks with us, how he opens up to us, how he goes ahead of us, and that he will not leave us. Today we'll hear that Jesus is our life, he's our eternal life. Recorded only in the 17th chapter of John are the words of a prayer spoken by our Lord on the night before his crucifixion. Now, though Jesus prayed often to his heavenly Father, only few of his prayers are actually recorded in the scriptures. And this is likely the greatest of them, the greatest prayer. In this 26 verses of the prayer, we catch a glimpse of this very intimate relationship that existed between God the Father and God the Son. A relationship of perfect unity which existed since before the world was created. Some argue that this prayer truly is what should be called the Lord's Prayer because of its importance. But it rather, we, it's been given a different name. It's been called the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus. And the first one who called it was a 5th century church father named Clement of Alexandria because he said that in this prayer Jesus presents himself to us as our great high priest who intercedes on behalf of believers of all ages, the past and the present and the future. And so this prayer that actually has 26 verses can be actually divided into sections. Verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself and to glorify God. And then in verses 6 through 19, he prays for his disciples. And in the final section, verses 20 through 26, Jesus prays for future believers. I will look at the first section, then, verses 1 through 5. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. There's basically one important word in this as Jesus prays for himself. And the word is glory or glorify. Jesus here asked the Father to glorify him with the glory that they shared in eternity. It is very clear from this verse that the glory of the Father and the glory of the Son are one and the same because Jesus is God equal to the Father, and he shared this glory in eternity. Father, the hour has come. That phrase, the hour has come, is something John repeats throughout his entire gospel. Starting with chapter 2, where Jesus performed the first miracle of changing water into wine. And he said, my hour has not yet come. And it is not until chapter 12 that he actually speaks of the hour that it has come as he is drawing near to Jerusalem and to the cross. The phrase, the hour has come, shows that Jesus knows the timing and the purpose of his ministry on earth. That he is not overtaken by unknown circumstances. 
that this hour is coming according to God's eternal plan. And the hour is the hour of his death on the cross. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that he may glorify you. And we said this is the prayer he's praying before his crucifixion. The word glorify here means show honor. And also to reveal, display the wonderful character of something or someone. During his life on earth, Jesus revealed many attributes of God's character. His power, his wisdom, God's justice, his love and compassion. Jesus taught with divine authority and performed miracles with divine power. So he revealed God's glory to us. The glory of the Father and the glory of the Son that are one from eternity because Jesus is God. But here Jesus prays to the Father to glorify him and he looks for glory in a last place where people would look for it, the cross. He is looking toward his death on the cross. How can the cross be Jesus' glory? How can he glorify the Father by dying on the cross. The hour in John's Gospel is the hour of Jesus' death on the cross, and it is also the hour of his glorification. Now, yes, to the world, it probably does not seem much like glory, but to the eyes of the believer, the glory of God is displayed on the cross. The cross is the glory of Jesus because it showed his total obedience to the Father's will. It showed his total faithfulness to the Father's plan. The cross is Jesus' glory because it was the completion of his work of redemption here on earth. Jesus prayed, I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Now speaking in our human terms, Jesus could have stopped short of the cross. But that would have left his work of redemption unfinished. And we'll see in this little presentation that our group is going to do, they are going to present the glory of the cross in God's work of redemption. You just only pay attention, it comes through very, very clearly. Remember Jesus' words on the cross, it is finished. It was then that the work that he came to do, the work of redemption was completed. Jesus came to this world to reveal God's love for the world. It goes with John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Jesus came into this world to reveal God's love. And by going to the cross, he showed that there was nothing, nothing that the love of God was not prepared to face or to do or to suffer for our sake. The cross is Jesus' glory because it shows that there is no limit to God's love for us. But the cross also glorified the Father because the Son brought honor to the Father by his perfect obedience to his will. And a child brings honor to his or her parents when the child obeys his or her parents. And we know that Jesus struggled and he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane to do God's will and to be faithful in the face of suffering and death. But rendering perfect obedience to God, Jesus glorified the Father in his death on the cross. So there can be honor and glory in death. And this is something also we remember and honor during this Memorial Day weekend. As we remember and honor those who gave their lives, who sacrificed their lives to protect.
protect this nation who sacrificed their life so that we can enjoy our freedoms and liberties, they sacrificed what was the dearest to them. And so we remember and honor them. There can be honor and glory in death. I encounter that statement many times as I minister to people who are dying. As a pastor, I have seen and been present at many deaths. And I prayed with people who wanted to prepare for their last journey, who wanted to die well. I've heard many also express to me their desire to have a funeral service that would glorify God. Sometimes they would say to me, don't talk too much about me. Just proclaim Jesus. Talk about Him. So on the night of His crucifixion, Jesus prayed to His Heavenly Father that His death on the cross may glorify God. And God had been glorified as the work that Jesus completed on the cross provided a great redemption. But also, God is glorified today as the work of redemption continues. It's still bearing fruit in the lives of believers by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is glorified as we worship Him, as we sing to His glory, as we pray, as we do dramatic presentations, as we proclaim His Word. But he is worthy of honor and glory also in our everyday lives, in every aspect of our lives, because he made us for his glory. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, in chapter 10 and verse 31, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Every area of our lives is meant to exude God's glory. And this is something we've been commissioned to in Holy Baptism. We're going to hear these words in a little bit as we have Holy Baptism this, this Sunday morning. But the words will be said, Let your light so shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our good works are always aimed at glorifying, glorifying God in heaven. So as baptized Christians, as baptized believers, we need to ask ourselves this question, does my life glorify God? Is my life driven by yearning to bring Him honor and glory? And if not, everything in my life glorifies Him, then what needs to be changed? What needs to be corrected so that He will be fully glorified in my life? I think this text calls us to ask ourselves this question, to search our hearts and ask ourselves, how can I live to glorify God in my life? The other big word in this text that is connected to Jesus glorifying His Father is eternal life. The work that Jesus completed on the cross glorified God, but also it provided the great redemption and the gift of eternal life. And so John 17 verse 3 offers a well-known definition of what eternal life is. This is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Here we, we hear that Jesus has been given authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom the Father has given him. And eternal life is to know the eternal God, the one and only true God, and the Son whom he sent, Jesus Christ. But we have to be careful about the meaning of the word to know. Because it means that biblical no means something a little different than often the word no we use in our everyday English. The Greek word to know, genesko, actually does not mean intellectual knowledge. But it means a very intimate, personal relationship with someone. One of the nearest and dearest relationships in life. 
Yes, there is an element of intellectual knowledge to knowing God. And it has to do that with Scripture. Finding out from Scripture what God is like. What He has done for us. How He has acted in the world. What is His will for His people. But to truly know God is to have a relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. Because the one and only true God has revealed Himself to us fully in His Son, Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who made God known to us. So He is not a remote, not an unapproachable God, but He is the Father whose nature is to love His children. In Jesus and through Jesus, we know God the Father. And we enter into this life with Him, eternal life. Because it begins here and now in faith, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through baptism into Christ, and it continues throughout our lives with the help of the Holy Spirit. And then it continues into eternity. You know, we often think of eternal life as a place, but eternal life is a relationship. And it begins here and now with Him who only can give eternal life. Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the giver. God has given Him the authority to give eternal life. So, if you haven't received a gift of eternal life from Jesus, all you have to do is ask Him. And if you already have, then praise Him and give glory to His name. At this time, I invite forward the family, the Maynard family, for our baptism. Come on in. President of our congregation, uh, and this is uh, Lauren and Tyler, and they are the proud parents of the guest of honor, who is Mr. Zane. Right? This is Ashley and Chance, and you're serving as uh, Godmother and Godfather. Other way around, Godmother and Godfather. <laughs> so great to have. You. Well, let us begin. Let us begin. So, in holy baptism, our gracious and heavenly Father liberates us from sin and from death. By joining us to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We are all of us born the children of a fallen humanity. But in the waters of baptism, by the power and the promise of the Holy Spirit, we are reborn as the children of God and as the inheritors of eternal life. And as we live with God and with his people, we learn to grow in faith, in love, in hope, in obedience to his will until that day when Jesus Christ comes again. So I ask, who is it who brings Zane forward for baptism today? Wonderful. Well done, Ashley. <laughs> so Chance and Ashley and, um, and Tyler and Lauren, as, as the parents and as the godparents, you're presenting Zane Ford for baptism today. And that means that you take certain obligations upon yourselves. Namely, you promise to faithfully bring him to the services of God's house, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, to place into his hands the Holy Scriptures, to provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, so that living within the covenant of this is baptism and in communion with the church, Zane can lead a godly life until the day that Jesus Christ comes again. Now these are the obligations that you take upon yourself as the sponsors and as the parents. Do you promise to fulfill them? Wonderful. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty Lord, and gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your Holy Spirit moved over the waters and you created the heaven and the earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery and into the promised land. 
In the waters of the river Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from our bondage to sin and death. He has opened the way to joy and freedom and everlasting life. And he made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and of rebirth. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Zane, who will be baptized here this morning. Lord, wash away all of his sin as he is cleansed by this water, and bring him forth as an inheritor of your kingdom. For to you be the praise and the honor and the glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Well done, Scott. I ask you then to profess your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, the faith into which Zane will be baptized. And so I ask you as the congregation, and you as the parents, as the sponsors, I ask you, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? And together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. All right, so how is your son named? This won't hurt, I promise. Zane, Alan, Mayo, Zane, I baptize you, Zane, in the name of the Father, And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go, thank God. All right, John, if you can hold the guy up for us. Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> well, he's giving me this thing, guy. Lord God, pour down upon Zayn Allen your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge of the Lord and the spirit of joy in your presence. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Zayn Allen, Son of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. You have been marked with the cross of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, Lord, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Lord, look with kindness upon Tyler and Lord. Let them ever rejoice in this gift of life that you have given them. Holy Father, make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their son, and strengthen them in their own baptism, so that they may share eternally with their son the salvation which you have prepared for your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has now made Zayn Alam Madam a member of the priesthood of Christ that we all share, so that, he may, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all of the world. And together we say, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the saint and heavenly Father, and the Lord in the kingdom of God. I won't trip when I do that, I promise. May I? Hi, buddy. Oh, hey. Let's welcome the newest member of our church and of God's kingdom, Zayn Alameda.
while they're returning to their, their seats, if you would please, uh, actually, Austin, now you're up, right? So Austin, you might want to come on board. Congratulations. You're welcome. Ashley? So Austin, if you would please kneel. So Austin Horner, will you assume the office of the summer of in, the summer intern of children and youth ministry in the confidence that this office comes from God? And will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the teaching and the practice of the Lutheran Church? Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures, faithful in your use of the means of grace and of prayer? Install you to serve at St. John Lutheran Church as the summer intern of children and youth ministry in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, as you call the apostles and the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers to instruct, comfort, admonish, and care for us, so, Lord, you have called Austin into your holy church as your servant. Father, fill him with wisdom and patience. Fill him with love and a joy in serving others. Keep him faithful to your word and to the holy way of Jesus Christ. Let your Holy Spirit sustain him with gladness to teach, to comfort, to counsel, and to guide your people to maturity in Christ Jesus. For we ask this in his name. Amen. If you would please stand and face the congregation, let's now welcome him as the new angel. At this time, our service continues with our prayer. If you would please stand as you are willing and able. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Holy Father, you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son, not only that the world might be saved and have eternal life, but also, Lord, that all who call upon you through Jesus may be one. Father, we praise you. We praise you for the cross on which you glorified your Son. We praise you for the cross on which your Son glorified you. And we ask, Lord, give us the heart, give us the will to give you the glory in the way that we live and in the way that we die. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember before you all of the men and the women who have given their lives in the service of our country. Lord God, we thank you for their sacrifice. And we ask that you would comfort those whom they have left behind with a sure and a certain promise of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those who are now actively serving our country. We pray for those from our congregation, for Arthur Walter, Mark Baker, Luke Jordan, Connor McEachran, Ryan Romaine, Josh Bitsky, Thomas Payne, Forrest Voss, Rusty Nail, Ryan Harada, those whom we now name. Lord, we ask for your hand of protection upon them and over them. We ask, Lord, that you would give them diligence to do their duty, and we pray that you would bring them safely home. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, we pray now for those who have asked that we pray for them. We remember before you all of our members in residential care. We lift up to you Butch, Robbie, 
Clinton Scheel, Richard Grill, Pat Albrecht, Rudy Krish, Carolyn Walden, John Watson, Nellie Smith, Carolyn Lane, Jean Sheffy, Gayla Finch, Donald and Margie Lenartz, Douglas Bowker, those whom we now name. Holy Father, we ask that you would put your hand of healing upon them in body, and that you would give them strength and peace and comfort in spirit. Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord God, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We lift up to you Bob and Mindy Westfall for the loss of their daughter. Lord, give them the sure, the certain hope that because Jesus lives, she shall live also. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, as we approach this end of the school year, we pray for our students. Lord, give them energy, give them wisdom, give them confidence, give them clarity and recall as they face final exams. And Lord, we pray for the teachers. Give them patience and joy that they might finish this year well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Now, Father, all of these things we pray. Trusting not in ourselves, but in your great mercy toward us, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. In this time, uh, gentlemen, just a second. Please be seated. And this time for our offering, uh, we have the, the, the youth from Faith Lutheran Church. Tell them if you come forward.
Thank you. If you would please stand as together we receive our offering, our prayer is printed above us, and together we pray. Gracious God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come now to the celebration of Holy Communion, and as Lutheran Christians we believe, teach, and practice that communion is what our Lord and Savior tells us. It is his body and blood given to us in and with the bread and the wine given to us freely, the forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life. And therefore, all who have been baptized into Jesus, all who believe in Jesus are welcome to come forward and to receive Jesus in his Holy Son. There will be three stations at the head of the aisle. Communion today is by intinction. Please take the wafer, dip it into the wine. If you would prefer gluten-free elements, let us know. We have those available too. There is a liturgy printed above us. Let us begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. But chiefly on this day are we bound to thank you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Savior. For he is the true Passover lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed the power of death, and by his rising has opened the way to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and all the women, with Peter and all the witnesses to the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all of their creatures, with the angels and the archangels, the cherubim and the seraphim, we sing your praise and join their unending hymn. are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation which you have prepared for us. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we might receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in this, his Holy Son. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. For on the night in which he was betrayed, your Son, our Savior, took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. and the ushers will direct you forward.
you would please stand as you are able for the conclusion of our service. And now the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive now the benediction. As you go on your way, may the risen Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our concluding hymn is hymn number 507, How Firm a Foundation.